Hello, I'm uh, Pastor Rita Gant, and my husband, Pastor Tori, and I, and our church family at House of Power Outreach welcome you to this teaching tonight. Um, I'm just really excited about this word that the Lord has given me. It's called Inside Out, and I'm just ready to get going and uh, get this word in you. But let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. We open up our hearts to receive all that you have for us. Help us to focus in on you and your word and your Holy Spirit's guidance. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, like I said, it's called Inside Out, and my byline here is Life Circumstances Can Reveal Our Inner Life to Us. And we're going to start in Proverbs 21, 2. I have it here in the ESV. And it says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Okay, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. So like I said, tonight we're going to talk about um, our inner life and um, our outer life. And all of us have these two things. We have an outer life that everybody sees, and then we have an inner life that we can see and uh, God definitely sees. So we all have these two parts of our being. Our outer life is what everyone sees, and our inner life is what we don't usually share with anyone, but that God sees openly. 1 Samuel 16, 7 in the ESV says, um, and this is when they were anointing the next king, and Samuel the prophet uh, was the one going out to do it. And then the Lord told Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, talking about one of David's brothers. Uh, for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. He looks at the inner man, the inner self, the inner life. Our outer life is our reputation with people, and our inner life is our reputation with God. And a lot of people focus so much on the outer life that they don't ever even recognize their inner life too much, much less desire to work on it. And we're going to talk about the benefit of working on our inner life here today. As Christians, we get the amazing privilege and benefit of the Holy Spirit's indwelling. So we have the help of God himself to not only see the inner man or inner life that we have, but we also contain the power we need to change our inner selves to reflect the glory of God. But in order to do that, we need to acknowledge what is going on inside of us and uh, evaluate our inner self to see what actually needs changing. You see, we can just choose to ignore the inner life and let it run its own course by being led by our flesh, our emotions, our circumstances, or we can choose to examine our inner self to see what's really going on in there and see if it is pleasing to God or not and if it really does reflect who we are made, purposed, and created to be. Um, First Thessalonians 2, 4, I have it here in the ESV, says, But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. So you might ask, what is the benefit of making changes to my inner life? Let's just talk a little bit about the inner life. It's a busy, busy place. There's a lot going on in our inner lives. And um, just to make it more clear, that's what's what's just you know how you're processing through your emotions and your thoughts and and you know uh, feelings and what's going on there you know what's uh, it's just like a, a busy intersection it's just things coming and going or it is in my life anyways and uh, maybe in yours um, but the uh, the inner life usually um, is usually a more complex place than what we show outwardly okay. Um, so what is the benefit of making changes to your inner life? The most important benefit, I would say, is that if you make changes in your inner life uh, to reflect the glory of God in your life, then you will live in inner peace. And I think inner peace is priceless. You just can't put a price on that. When we live our lives being run by circumstance and emotion, we will continually lack inner peace. I've done that. I've, let, you know... I guess we all have let our, our emotions control us or our thoughts and feelings, and uh, that usually leads to a lot of chaos and a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, lack of peace. When we choose to acknowledge God in our inner life and make changes in our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, when we make these changes to include Him and His guidance, then we are inviting inner peace to become a stabilizing factor in our inner self, and we will not live in that turmoil. We can try to ignore the inner self, but the truth is we cannot ignore who we are on the inside. 
Proverbs 27, 19, I have it here in the ESV, says, As in water, face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects the man. So what's going on inside you really reflects who you are, who you are, okay? So you can disguise the outer self, we've all done that, and show everyone else the opposite of the truth, but you can't ever fool God, you know, he sees it all. If our inner man or self is right with God and progressively moving forward with God, then there is a peace in our souls that passes understanding that guards our heart and our minds. We, we get that from uh, Philippians 4, 7. <clears throat> okay, so have you ever just felt truly just exhausted by the end of the day and you didn't really do anything physical? I have done that. Sometimes fatigue comes not from what your body has done, but from what your inner self is going through all day long, okay? If we have peace all day long, then we will not be so exhausted by the end of the day. But if our thoughts and attitudes uh, on the inside and in our inner man are, uh, you know, just busy, busy, busy and, and uh, in turmoil, then it can actually cause some serious fatigue and we can just be worn out by the end of the day. You see, our thoughts and attitudes toward our problems and circumstances are much more important to pay attention to than the actual problems or circumstances themselves. I'm going to say that again. Our thoughts and attitudes toward our problems and circumstances are much more important to pay attention to than our problems or circumstances themselves. And not to discount our problems or circumstances. I realize, and so does God, that they are, you know, real. Uh, but how we handle them is going to make or break our peace level. As a side note, I'm going to add this. Uh, most people's outer lives, their outer show of who they are is a sham <laughs> a lot of the time. If there's not a whole lot of uh, God on the inside and reflection of God on the inside, then the outer is usually a, a big cover-up. Um, it's just true. Uh, we normally show, as a, as, a, as a whole, human beings normally show people what we want them to see. Um, and especially with social media nowadays, it's just crazy. We give everyone the view of our best selves, don't we? Um, the true danger there is that, number one, we could end up basing our relationships that we accrue with these different um, facades. We could end up basing our relationships on lies, our lies and others' lies, okay? And then number two, we can believe our own lies and not ever look down deep enough um, to allow any kind of growth to our inner selves or our inner lives. Uh, so the Bible is very clear that we should not judge um, appearances, right? John seven twenty four, I have it in the Amplified Classic, says, Be honest in your judgment and do not decide at a glance, superficially and by appearances, but judge fairly and righteously. So it's important for us, and you know, in James 2, 1 through 26, of that whole, uh, I don't, don't really have time to go into all of that scripture, but it's talking about, uh, God is saying, you know, when you see someone come into the assembly and they're dressed nice and, and look rich or whatever, don't give them the preferred seat. And if you see somebody that's coming in and all ragged clothes or whatever, don't you tell them to sit on the floor by your feet. You know, you can't judge uh, by appearances. And I think that a lot of times we as the human race do that often. And uh, we need to be more careful about not doing that. So, uh, we must not ju judge by outward appearance. Like I said, yet that is what a lot of us do continuously. We need to be more aware in our lives of this instruction from God not to uh, decide at a glance. Okay? Um, on the flip side of that, we need to care less about what people think of us and more well about what God thinks of us. Um, that's really more important, I think. I wonder how many people have actually traded their true destiny for popularity and approval from man instead of approval from God. And uh, just think about that for a second. So we're talking about the outer life and the inner life. The outer life is what everybody sees. The inner life is what's going on inside you that God truly sees. And um, how do we work on this inner life? I'm saying uh, we need to work on it and to, you know, um, get things in order there. And, you know, what I'm saying is that we need to, to um, allow God to help us to change from the inside out. Okay? So how do we work on this inner life? In order for me to answer that, you will need to know the following. And if you already know this, that's great. That means you can uh, you listen for a minute and maybe have a, a better way to explain it to someone else. 
but we are a triune being, which means we have three parts. Uh, we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And the body usually just does what it's told to do, right? Um, unless it's been given an addiction and then it starts kind of acting out on its own. So the body is the body. The soul, which is our carnal or fleshly nature, is run by our thoughts, or it can be carnal or fleshly in nature, is run by our thoughts, our will, and our emotions, okay? If the soul itself, without God's influence, God's influence is left to run our lives, you, know, you can't run your life on your emotions and on your, you know, just you're based on your thoughts and your emotions because that can be a very messy way to live. It can be very messy and peace can be elusive. Um, our spirit, actually, so we've got a body, we have a soul, our mind, will, and our emotions, and then we have a spirit. And our spirit is awakened to God when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us. And so that's when the Holy Spirit comes to live in us and when we feed our spirit the Word of God when we feed our spirit the Word of God and obedience to God and His guidance and His leading and His Word, then that strengthens our spirit. And <clears throat> it just makes our spirit stronger. And the stronger it gets, the more input it has into our decisions. Okay? So it can become so strong, like if you feed uh, your spirit the Word of God and obedience to God and you say yes to the Lord and, and you just can't get enough of Him and you can't get enough of His Word and, you know, uh, spending time with Him, talking to Him, it changes you from the inside out and your spirit, man, becomes stronger than your mind, your will, your emotions, and your soul. So when your spirit, man, is stronger than your soul, then your spirit, man, helps to make better decisions in your life, okay? So you're not just being run off of, uh, you're not, your life isn't just being run off knee-jerk reactions and what that person said or how this made you feel or, or anything like that. So the stronger your spirit man gets, the more input it has in our decisions. It can become so strong that it will keep the body and its cravings in line hmm, and can govern the soul by influence, th influencing thoughts and emotions to line up with the truth of God's Word. So this is a believer is what we want. That's, you know, as a Christian, that is what we want. We want our spirit man strong enough to be able to be in control of what's going on in our inner self. So this is the way to inner peace and stability. So really, basically, the answer is the more time you spend thinking about God, meditating on the Word of God, and choosing to obey the leading of the Word and the Holy Spirit, then the more you are strengthening your spirit and your inner man or inner self begins to change and becomes less of a mess and more of a miracle. And I say that because I believe that my inner self was such a mess that it took a miracle from God to straighten it all out. And you know, I'm not completely perfect, but definitely a lot better than I used to be, amen? So I had so many emotions flying around in there and so many thoughts that had no basis in truth that quite honestly, I know that without God, my mind would have ended up unstable, you know? and. And that's no joke. I actually have uh, in my family history uh, instability in the mind. I have uh, my mom and my dad were both institutionalized for that, I know. <laughs> but God, amen. And I have, uh, a, 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 you know, I'm a new crea creature. I'm a new creation in Christ, amen. And, and my mind is stable because of God and because of His Word, amen. So, I mean, that, yeah, that's just... I know that without God, my mind would have ended up unstable. That's what years of abuse and turmoil can do. And that is the enemy's plan, is to uh, just make us lose control in our minds and not know what's going on and, and confuse us and, and try to, you know, make us feel like, you know, hopeless. Make us feel like we don't have any hope. We don't have any friends. We don't have anything good, you know. And just that's what the enemy's plan is, is to destroy us. You know, the thief comes only but to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Jesus came to bring life in that more abundantly. That's John 10, 10. And so, you know, God's plan is always better. Amen. But God, amen. God had a better plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, a plan for a future and a hope for me. Amen. And he has a great plan for you as well. So I've said all of that to say this. Let's take a moment to examine ourselves. Are your thoughts continuously on your problems? Do you often react emotionally without thinking things through? Do you often feel hopeless and without guidance? Do you dwell on the negative continuously instead of anything positive? Um, if so, then your soul 
is probably in control in your inner life. And if your soul is in charge with your mind, your will, your emotions, without any input from a good, strong spirit that's governed by the Word of God and the truth of God and the Holy Spirit's leading, then, like I said, your life can be very messy. And, and, and peace can just be elusive. Um, if something your soul is in your inner life is in charge and your spirit needs strengthening, but don't be discouraged. God works quickly and he will exponentially multiply any efforts that you put towards strengthening your spirit. Like I said, he will exponentially multiply your efforts, but there needs to be some effort. Amen. Um, just watching this teaching because of the word is strengthening your spirit and your inner man. Okay. Now you must decide if you will listen to the Word and the Holy Spirit's guidance and obey when asked to make change to your inner life or if you're just going to continue in the same way that you were in before you started listening to this teaching. And that's for those that are allowing the soul to run their lives. But if you're, if you're strengthened in your spirit and your spirit is, is uh, more in control, then praise God for that. That's awesome. Okay, so here's an example. I told you last week that I had to stop being quick to anger because I read in the Word uh, that whoever, you know, allows you, that I just didn't want that to control me, that it was not right to have that anger control me, okay? So I had a choice to make. I decided to change my inner self, to exercise self-control in my thoughts and my actions when an occasion to become angry came to me. And I've made some pretty good progress here uh, through the years and, um, you know, back and forth. Sometimes you, you make some progress and then you slip back and you make some progress and then you slip back and then, you know, or you could just make some progress and keep going. Uh, hopefully that's the case for you. But uh, I, you know, would go through seasons where I would strengthen my inner man and strengthen my inner self with the Word of God and, and you know, being close to God. And, and I can tell through my life where I was, you know, if I look back, I can see where I was stronger in my inner man and the spirit uh, than in my soul. But, um, you know, it's better just to get strong and stay strong and keep pumping the Word of God in and keep obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit and keep doing what you know to do and keep moving progressively forward so that you don't, uh, get back in there in that uh, situation where you're falling back into those sins. Um, here's another important note. Oh, let me finish that. I had a choice to make. I decided to change my inner self to exercise self-control in my thoughts and actions. So when an occasion to become angry came to me, I was able to handle it better. And I was able to, um, you know, just not lose it. And so that's just growth there, growth there. We all need to grow in different areas. So that's just one example. There could be so many different uh, areas that we can allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen us in our inner man through the Spirit. Um, so here's another important thing I wanted to say. First Corinthians thirteen seven. the whole thing about love and love is patient, love is kind. It also says that, uh, that you know, because we are, are in Christ, we are to love others as we love ourselves but it also says that we are to believe the best of everyone so when we walk in love that love believes the best of everyone and uh, I put down here Sila that means pause and calmly think of that we are to believe the best of everyone now I'm not saying you know just be unwise and just let everybody run all over you and do whatever they want that's not what I'm talking about but I'm talking about what is our first thought whenever somebody comes into our life or somebody speaks something or somebody does something or whatever, we are, we are to act in love. And that means believing the best of them before we go to the worst. Now, they may prove that there's some bad things there, but we need to believe the best. And so that's something that the Lord wanted me to really, you know, kind of point out. Believing the best of every person really speaks more about us than it does about the other person. It shows if we are a negative or a positive thinker and can reveal our inner life to us. We're talking about our inner life and how to, how to be stronger in our inner life. If we are constantly thinking the worst of everyone in every situation, that's a good indicator that we need more word in our lives. Amen? I'm going to say that again. If we are constantly thinking the worst of everyone in every situation, then that's a good indicator that we need more word in our lives. And our inner man needs some attention. Um, it needs to be uh, strengthened in, in the Word and in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 23, 7 says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, or a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. This reveals if we are a negative or positive person, and here's a hint, a person of faith 
should always be a positive person. A person of faith should always be a positive person. Also, this scripture comes to mind when examining the inner life, James 4.17. I know I use this often, but it's so good. I have it here in the ESV. Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Okay? And for my final point and my final scripture, I've got Jeremiah 17.10 in the ESV. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So I thought this was interesting. I heard a preacher say this. How do we test fruit? Sometimes to see if it is ripe. We squeeze it, right? Kind of touch it. We pick it up. We feel it. Um, but we squeeze it. Well, when life throws us challenges and we get squeezed, do we show how ripe we are for God? Or are we still kind of hard, tart, bitter, and inedible? Hmm. Another Sela moment. Pause and calmly think of that. So what happens when we get squeezed, when life throws us challenges? Um, do we show that we are ripe to uh, give off the, you know, the glory of God, to, to point to God and to speak words of, of faith and, and uh, you know, or are we still hard, tart, bitter, and inedible? Hmm. Life circumstances can reveal our inner life to us. It's up to us to examine it and make the changes we need to make uh make the changes that we need uh, to grow beyond the difficulties. We need to make, when, when we end up in a situation where, you know, life is hard, there's a, a, a difficult situation, we have a choice to make. We can um, basically just sit down and say, you know what, life's hard. Or we can say, you know what, I know that God has got this, and if there's anything I need to do to make a change, then I believe that God will show me what I need to do, and then we need to make the change, okay? But what happens um, whenever we have a difficult situation in our life will reveal to us how in order we are in our inner self. And if we're out of sorts and completely uh, lost, then we need to be closer to God so that God can help us to get through that difficult situation. Um, otherwise, we will just continue to live in those difficult situations the same that way that we always have without peace. So inner peace comes from a strong spirit and a secure inner life. Knowing God is the only way to get that inner peace, to get that, that inner stability. And when I say knowing God, I mean knowing God. Just not knowing there's a God, but like knowing God and, and being a part of, of what He's got going on. You know, asking him, hey, how can I do this better? And, you know, okay, so that didn't work out. Now, what, do I, what can I do that's better? Or, you know, it's, it's really not about the circumstances and about what everybody else is doing. It's really about how you're handling the circumstance and how you can do better. And so that's really what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. We, we can be changed from the inside out. Um, do the power of God's Word, the power of His love for us and our trust in Him. Uh, but we are going to need to make some necessary changes in order to have that happen. In order for us to live in true inner peace, we're going to need to make the changes uh, that are revealed to us as we go through these circumstances and these difficulties and these, these situations. So every circumstance, every difficulty, every situation, even if it's a minor thing, can reveal to you a better way to do something or a better way to think about something. And all we need to do is find out what the Word of God says about it for sure, and then follow also the Holy Spirit's guidance and, and leadership. You know, He will lead you in the right way. And uh, so I just wanted to encourage you with all this information. I hope that that will help you uh, to, you know, for one, just be aware that there is an inner life. You know, some people might go their whole life without even recognizing that there's some things going on inside that need some attention. And the bottom line is that, you know, we aren't just what everybody sees. We're what God sees. And what God sees is way more important than what everybody else sees. And I, I hope that 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 helped you. I'm about out of time. I'm going to go ahead and pray and ask the Lord just to help us um, to, you know, strengthen our inner man, our inner life. Um, let's, let's pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation, the awareness that we do have an inner life that's a busy place, Lord God. Help us to press into you there and to make any changes that need to be made in order to live in the peace that you've already uh, paid for for us. 
We just thank you, Lord God, that you help us to follow after you. We know that you are good and we can trust you. And we thank you, Lord God, that we just uh, surrender to you our inner life and we surrender to you our thoughts and our, our will, our emotions. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you help us not only to make sense of it all, but to just, Lord, have your very best there. Um, to really be able to walk out the plan and the purpose that we were created for by you. And we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your, your peace that passes understanding that guards our heart and our mind. And we thank you, Lord God, that you will help us uh, be aware of all these little changes that need to be made as they come up. And, Lord God, that we will obey and become stronger and stronger in you in every way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, life circumstances can reveal our inner life to us. Let's make sure that when that does happen, that we... We listen to the, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit guiding us and directing us in the way that we should go. Amen. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.